Hey YouTube, it's Sebastian, KF5OBS. And today we're going to talk about how to measure the uh, noise figure of an amplifier using the gain method with nothing else but a spectrum analyzer. So uh, real quick, in an ideal world, if you have an amplifier and you switch it on, you have nothing connected to the input, in theory you should have absolutely nothing coming out of the output. Now in reality, we have noise. Uh, we have different type of noises and the most important or the most dominant one usually is uh, Johnson Nyquist noise which is also referred to as thermal noise because uh, the temperature actually has a big influence on how much noise is generated and uh, so what we expect to see in a real world application is at least that um, Johnson Nyquist noise amplified by whatever gain the amplifier has at the output now again, that's still in an ideal world. In reality, the amplifier will introduce some noise on its own. And the idea behind determining the noise figure using the gain method is actually very simple. We determine what the spectral density of the output is, then we do the math of what it should be just looking at thermal noise, and we assume that the difference can be attributed to the uh, noise that the amplifier generates by itself. So that's pretty straightforward, but if you've never done anything with noise, this may be quite confusing. So let's get started here. What we're looking at is the data sheet of a MiniCircuits ZKL2 Plus amplifier. It's an amplifier for 10 to 2000 megahertz. And um, let's, uh, let's say that the noise figure is actually frequency dependent. That's very important. And we're going to have a look at what the noise figure is at right around 10 megahertz. And in the data sheet, we can see 10 megahertz right here. Now, I selected 9 volts supply voltage. So we see the gain is 30.17 dB. So we expect the output noise to be at least this much above thermal noise. And then mini circuits gives us a noise figure over here. Well, that one's measured at 12 volts. Regardless, the noise figure is 3.43 dB, as given. So, um, of course, many circuits could write whatever number they want in here. So, um, let's check. Let's see if that's uh, anywhere near to what it should be. And one thing we need to know is what thermal noise to expect. And that depends on a lot of things. For once, the temperature, obviously. That's why it's called thermal noise. And the next thing it depends on is the uh, bandwidth. Obviously, the higher your bandwidth, the more noise you're going to capture. So that's a very important thing. Um, temperature, this table here assumes room temperature. Sometimes that's uh, 290 Kelvin, I believe, and sometimes it's 300 Kelvin. This one says it's 300K. Other literature uses 290K, so that varies. But the numbers here, um, that's what we're going to go with. And... Uh, expressed as a formula our spectral power here is a negative 174 plus 10 log 10 and then your bandwidth and uh, if you work with uh, multiples of 10 it makes your life really easy if you remember 174 you can determine 1 hertz 10 hertz 100 hertz 1 kilohertz and so on very easily in your head and uh, if you look here in this table 1 hertz has 100 negative 174 dbm uh, thermal noise power, then 10 hertz has 10 dBm more, 100 hertz, 10 dBm more, and so on. And it gives us some odd steps here too, like 15 kilohertz and 180 kilohertz. And the reason it does that is because it corresponds to a certain channel bandwidth. And uh, so um, maybe we should have a look at the setup of the spectrum analyzer that I'm using to measure the power so that we can decide what we expect the output to be. So I have the output of the ZKL2 Plus connected directly into this MD0-4104B spectrum analyzer and the input is left open. So uh, of course we're catching some interference with that. We could terminate it, but remember that any resistor also adds noise. It's not much. You can terminate it with a 50 ohm resistor, but if you want to do this clean, you put it in some sort of shielded container and just leave the input open. Now, as far as the setup is concerned, your resolution bandwidth actually matters because that will correspond to the thermal noise power bandwidth. So I set this up to 10 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz resolution bandwidth, 
And so uh, according to the sheet we looked at before and we would expect 100, negative 134 dBm thermal noise power. And if you remember the uh, gain of the amplifier was given as, as 30.17 dB. So we expect something around uh, at least negative 104 dBm, something like that. And uh, I mean, you already see the markers here, so you know, know the actual result, but let's talk about the setup here first. So we got 10 kilohertz resolution bandwidth. Got my marker at 10 megahertz, where I want to be. Um, the, uh, my uh, span here was just picked arbitrarily. There's absolutely no thinking behind that. And uh, very important, if you just show the normal spectrum trace, um, you see this mess. It's noise that we're looking at. So it's gonna be noisy, quite obviously, and your results vary. If I would single shot capture this here, uh, you would have a different amplitude every time. So what I really did is for my trace here, you know, create an average trace, and I'm using the maximum as 512 averages. And every time you try to uh, quantize noise or show noise, like if you're measuring a filter response or something like that on a spectrum analyzer, that's a very handy feature to just average everything and uh, see what you get. So, again, there's nothing at the input and uh, the output goes directly into the instrument. And we're seeing here negative 101 dBm. And this instrument also shows the uh, spectral density as dBm per hertz. That's really nice. Not every instrument does that. But we have this number here, so we actually have two numbers we can play with. We have the negative 101 dBm that we will do the math with for the 10 kilohertz resolution bandwidth. And then we have the negative 141 dBm per hertz as spectral density. And that's really nice that it shows that. And uh, that way we have two values to work with and we will calculate both. And in an ideal world, the uh, noise figure calculated for both will be exactly the same. So, let's see. We'll need a calculator. Here it is. So, the first thing we're going to look at is our 10 kilohertz bandwidth. And if I move this table here for a little bit, uh, you can't see that. Now you can. The 10 kilohertz, we expect thermal noise power of negative 134 dBm. So, uh, we'll take our result that we really have, that we measure from the output of the, spe of the amplifier, and that's negative 101 dBm. We add what we expect, but as a positive value. So, 134 dBm. And we get a number. And uh, 33 dB is uh, how much above thermal noise the output of this amplifier is. And we expect some of this to be attributed to uh, the amplification, of course. I mean, the noise is going to get amplified. And we remember from the data sheet right here that our expected gain is 30.17 dB. And you should absolutely verify that. I mean, this is just a data sheet value. It does not mean that this amplifier actually has this gain at this supply voltage and this frequency and all that good stuff. But I did verify it. It was pretty darn close. So we're just gonna go with that number. So part of this 33 dB here is going to be the gain on its own and we know how much namely 30.17 so we just subtract that and that's our noise figure 2.83 dB it's the noise figure that we have determined here it's as simple as that and we're going to do a cross check we also remember that the spectral density was given as negative 141 dBm per hertz so let's do the same play with 1 hertz so negative 141 plus 174 equals again 33 and if we subtract subtract 30.17 yet again we get a noise figure of 2.83 if we go back to the data sheet we see that our expected noise figure at 12 volts though is supposed to be 3.43 db so the uh, actual noise performance of this amplifier um, as we have measured it, is much better than what mini circuits promised in the data sheet. And I'll zoom out here and actually show the setup. So there's the uh, ZKL2 amplifier right here. 
the input is unterminated, just left open. The output goes directly into the MDO4000, and uh, here's the MDO4000. There's nothing special about it, just right out the box with the configuration that I showed you. The averaging is really, really, really important. I'll show you this if you actually don't average, whoops, uh, spectrum traces, switch the averages off and the normal on, and now let me let it run. Uh, that's what you get. You get, of course, it's noise. You get random stuff. Jumps around here, negative 97 I saw, 106 I saw, but this averaging really saves you. So you don't really have to do 512, but the more the better. It takes a while, of course, to get 512 averages together, but even with less, see already now you can see it's uh, somewhere around 100 dBm. Um, it varies. Sometimes it shows negative 100 dBm, sometimes 101. It really depends uh, on the run. But anyway, so see, there we go. Now it goes up to negative 101 dBm. And that's how simple that is. We have successfully determined the noise figure of an amplifier using the gain method. So all you really need to be able to do is measure the gain. Like I said, don't trust the data sheet. Verify that the gain is actually what you expect it to be. And you need some sort of device that can measure power, but as power density. You need to be able to limit your bandwidth. So uh, a spectrum analyzer such as this, or an oscill any oscilloscope with a good FFT is all you need. And that's, that's all there is to 